Myself and Mike Egan here are, uh, are talking about grazing management to increase uh, nitrogen use efficiency. And um, I suppose the key thing here is, you know, dairy farming is there's inputs and outputs. So the, the farm purchased inputs are, you know, chemical in, concentrate, or maybe grass silage in some farms, livestock purchases or imported slurry. So I suppose this is one side of the scales, and the outputs then are, you know, whatever milk protein you sell, milk solids you sell out the farm gate. Livestock sales, forage sales, and slurry exports. But like, you know, it's probably the first two here, and it's probably the first two here. So, in general, when we talk about nitrogen use efficiency, we're we're saying how much, how efficient is the nitrogen on the farm. But really, I suppose what we're targeting targeting here is to reduce the end surplus that you have on a farm. You know, how much nitrogen that you can use and how much you can take down that surplus. So, I suppose this is a new concept for us all, um, and I suppose it's, it's it's really I suppose in in light of where our water quality is and, 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 and the progress we need to do and, and, and improving our water quality. While our water quality, Lawrence would have said our water quality is good, it needs to increase a bit better. So our target here for end use, for nitrogen, reducing end surplus is less than 150 kilos of nitrogen. And like, why focus on nitrogen use efficiency? It's not to say that we're doing everything wrong at the moment. There's only really no refinements to the grazing management approach that we have at the moment to make this a bit better. So. And I suppose one of the key things for us is, you know, you were probably here three years ago and there wasn't a whole pile of clover on this farm. And now you'll probably see that there's about, more packets about 80% clover at this stage. So, you know, what we're doing now in a lot of the research here, and you'll see it a good bit in the grass demo as well, nitrogen reducing any, uh, in, any input and how we can, you know, optimise grass production. And we don't want to reduce grass production, we want to increase it as much as possible. So what are the efficiencies then? You know, measuring grass, and I suppose adapting to you know how much grass you have in the farm is one of the key things. Putting the, the nitrogen input that you have relative to your grass growth is another important thing. You know, uh, the concept of taking out bales in every rotation, every second rotation, that kind of lead, lends us to believe that there's probably too much nitrogen going out in the farm. And in pasture base, and Michal O'Leary is in the audience here, we have a nitrogen planner. And I suppose what that is trying to do is, in the same as concentrate usage, you know, you're trying to track how much nitrogen you're going to put out and whether you, have, whether you can adapt that backwards or forwards given your grass growth. You know, ultimately the spinner is the fellow who's in charge of, the fellow who calibrates the spinner and how much is put in, is put in the spinner is, is basically the, you know, the level of success whether nitrogen is cut back or, cut or brought forward. And like that's, it's important, you know, that, you know, this is, these two things are, are hand in hand. And then, you know, there's a lot of work, very good work has shown, you know, trailing shoe and, and, and dribble bar, what they are from a slurry efficiency. And like a lot of you in the last two years have put money into buying these. And like, if you have on the other side of that, the, the nitrogen bill for the farm should be coming backwards. You know, you shouldn't be having the same nitrogen bill when you, you, when you didn't have, a, you know, a, a, a trailing shoe or a dribble bar on the farm. Again, concentrate, you know, you'll see here in a minute, that's the average farm, that's the average cow in the country, that's what she's eating, about 1200 kilos of concentrate, and she's not overpowered with, with, with milk solids. So, you know, for us, that can come back and a lower crude pro protein content. And, you know, this is, a, this is a species that we need to get onto farms. Your soil fertility needs to be, I mean, Mike will talk about that, needs to be high for this to, for, the, for, for clover to grow. And I suppose, you know, you need a cow to, to have high in use efficiency. So the dairy in use roadmap, I suppose, this is where we are currently on the average farm in the country um, and the average performance for a couple of things and this I suppose is where we need, where, where we're targeting to go to. We mightn't get there but we're targeting to get there. So I suppose about 420 kilos of solids, you know about 60 more in the system. You know a lot of this can be got for better, better, a, a couple of small things can, 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 can get those improvements. The stocking rate is slightly higher. The constant input is, you know, we, you, 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 we'll always talk about bringing this down lower, you know. Why are, we, why are we feeding more concentrate when we, have, we can grow grass? And like there's huge improvements in LES slurry out, in the far, out, 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 out at farm level, about 20% of the slurry out there nationally is, is, is being sprayed with this means and that will grow again. Chemical nitrogen, you know, we're, not, we're, we're at about 180 kilos of chemical nitrogen and we know we're trying to target to bring that back. Like we're bringing that back once we have clover in the, in the sward. You know, very hard to grow the same amount of grass if clover isn't there. The predicted urea usage is going up. You know, I know urea was dear this year, but you know, it didn't, uh, it, it was still well used this year. Our farm gate in use efficiency and our farm surplus are still, that is too low, and I suppose this is too high. 
and like this is where we want to get to you know we might not get to those figures but this is where i suppose what we can achieve with, with i suppose and with, 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 with more refinements to what we do as regards grazing management so mike is going to take over next and he's going to deal with the i suppose the management part of the things and 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 i'll be available for questions later on so look, Thank Mick has gone through a lot of the information in terms of how we increase nice juice efficiency and, and angles like that. And one of the key things that we know has worked with a lot of work done in more Park Clan and Kilty and Solihead is the role that white clover can play. And how do we incorporate white clover into our swords and how do we, in, in fact, get the benefit from it. So in terms of what does clover offer, and there's been a lot of work in terms of mixed solids production and also increased animal perform or increased herbage production and potential reductions in nitrogen fertiliser. And for what Mick was talking about in terms of NUE or nitrogen surplus, what we haven't really spoke about in terms of the role of clover in that in the last couple of years is how we can increase uh, nitrogen use efficiency and farm night gate nitrogen surplus. So look, most of this is driven in terms of an increase in nitrogen use efficiency targeting up on 55% and reducing our farm nitrogen surplus down to 79, 80 kilos. Most of that's coming from a reduction in chemical fertilizer of 100 kilos and also an increase in milk solids production. So there's more nitrogen going out the gate in terms of increased milk production. And that's given us an overall increase in, in profitability of about 108 euro, 110 euro per hectare. And that's on average of about from 2013 to 2019 in, in more per year. So there's huge roles of in terms of in, in not only increasing animal performance but also in, in improving our overall nitrogen and, and environmental footprint. But the biggest challenge that we see on farms is actually getting clover into our system and getting the benefit from it. So we know we can get the benefit from it, but incorporating that into our farm and getting enough of it in, in the swords is probably the, the key thing. Michael touched on it earlier on in terms of soil fertility. If we don't have optimum soil fertility, minimum of 6.3 to 6.5 for soil pH and index 3 and or ideally index 4 for P and K. It's very, very difficult to establish clover and also in maintain it in the swords going forward as well so if we don't have the correct soil fertility starting off it's a very very difficult part to in terms of establishing that clover in the swords and you'll see it as you go through the demo and the boards there in terms of establishing clover swords but soil fertility is key and we need to improve that soil fertility if we want to get the benefit and, and increase it on farm in terms of sowing there's two methods that we can re include clover in our swords full reseed and over sowing we know from all the work that we've done the best chance of getting a good clover sward established in your farm is through a full reseed um, you are less competition from grass and weeds and it's easier to get that clover established. So in terms of sowing, we're talking about 1.5 to 2 kilos an acre of clover included in the seed mix. Um, and again, you'll see that in the main board. And ideally, a spring reseed is much better in terms of getting that clover established and maintained in this ward. Over sowing again, Earlier in the year, April, May time, once you go past the middle of May, it's probably a little too late, it gets too dry, increasing that seeding rate up to 2.5. And the key thing that you must do whenever, if it's a full reseed or an over sow, in a reseed, get that post emergent spray correct in the correct timing so we can get a control on particularly those docks and thistles. And in terms of grazing management, regardless of reseed or over sowed, grazing management is key tight and frequent grazing. We don't want high heavy, heavy covers building up because the one thing that clover plant needs when it's germinating is light down to the base of this ward. And if we let heavy covers build up in either of those, it's very, very difficult to get light down to the base of this ward and tight residuals. So for the remainder of the year, once that goes in, tight re residuals and maintaining low levels of clover and closing those later in the final rotation to allow light over the winter. And it's, look, it's not just a case of putting clover into our swords and it's done and we don't have to touch it again. It is going to be a continuous involvement, like soil fertility, of maintaining clover in those swards by good soil fertility, good grazing management, and also topping up paddocks that start to decline in clover so we can maintain that in the benefit and not letting it die out completely. In terms of just where we are at the moment, in terms of preparing for spring 2021, uh, look, there's some key, tar key targets there, and, and you'll go through a lot more in detail in, in the, one of the boards in the village and the grazing demo. But we know at the moment, coming up with the, the middle of September now, we should be aiming for a 33 to 35 day rotation length. Pasture base average at the moment this week was 27.2 days. So we're a long way off in terms of target where we need to be in our current rotation length. And what that means is we actually have less grass on our farm. So average farm cover roughly should be between 400 and 450 kilos of dry matter per cow, depending on stocking rate. Again, you'll see that up there. Again, we're about 40, 60 kilos, 80 kilos off that at the moment per cow. We're about 328. So we're a long way off that in terms of where we should be in terms of our autumn covers. And the key thing that that's going to impact is next spring's grazing residuals and the amount of grass that we have on our farm. So we need to reduce our demand now, increase the rotation length, and let that cover build up as best as possible that we can. 
In terms of final rotation started, this is going to be different for individual farms, but it's going to be between the 1st and the 10th of October, and the higher stock in which you, you have, the earlier that closing day is going to be, and we've a lot of work done, that, done in that recent years to increase that opening farm cover, but the key thing we must maintain is a closing cover of between 650 and 750 kilos on the 1st of December, not on the date of housing, on the 1st of December, and if we drop our farm cover lower than that 650 kilos, when we, on the 1st of December, we won't have enough grass the following spring to target that 950 kilos to 1,000 of an opening farm cover. In terms of precision management, again, farm cover, the higher the amount of farm cover we have on our farm, it's going to lead to reduction in chemical fertiliser that might Mick has touched on earlier. So again, increasing that farm cover, using more slurry, less in our farms, target target 30% of our farm with slurry with less fertiliser, right timing and right product. So look at the predicted forecast, LED's grass growth model and the, the product that you use will protect your urea. And again, hitting those spring targets in terms of your opening farm cover, your residuals and your, your timings. Again, take home messages. If we get one thing from this board today, it's probably the role of clover can play in our farms and establishing that clover on our farms as we go forward. Using slurry, particularly with less, and reducing the chemical fertilizer as we increase the amount of slurry that's been deprived. And improving our nitrogen management and the nitrogen planner in the pasture base app is going to be a huge help in doing that. And try and reduce our overall nitrogen use, of increase nitrogen efficiency and reduce our nitrogen farm surplus.